in this video, we're going to explore what happens under the covers during our plug and play operation. And we're going to do this by firing up a Wireshark session. But before we do that, what I want to do is I want to access CE11. And what I'm going to do is I am going to log into it, admin, admin, and we used the enable password of admin when and where it's necessary. And from this device, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove it from our infrastructure. I'm going to do that using the request platform software SD-WAN configuration reset command, and that's going to blow the configuration off of this device. Now, Again, remember, we did not save the bootstrap to the boot flash. Ergo, what's going to end up happening is this is that device is going to come up. It's going to purge its configuration. It's not going to see a configuration file, and it's going to go ahead and attempt to connect via PNP, which means it's going to go out towards the devicehelper.cisco.com for the PNP portal at Cisco. It's going to determine whether or not it is quote-unquote permitted, aka whitelisted. Then that resource is going to notify it of the identity of our organizational vBond, and the device is going to go through that entire process that we've discussed to date. We just want to observe that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start this reset process. Now, once the reset process has taken place, we are going to go to Business Internet, Ethernet 02, and what we're going to do is we're going to start a Wireshark capture on that interface. So ultimately, what I'm doing is I'm waiting for this device to go through its reboot, its reload. So the device is now getting ready to initiate a reload. So once it starts and I see the hardware initializing, I'm going to start my Wireshark trace because I don't want any remnant configurational operations to show up in that trace. Here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to access Business Internet. From Business Internet, I'm going to start a capture operation, and I'm going to use Ethernet 02, and I'm going to capture Ethernet information. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I want to sort on... DHCP, because remember, that's the first operation. When this device comes back online, it should try to get an IP address. So what we'll do here is I'm going to drag this down so I get a little bit more real estate. And we're going to observe what happens. Once we see the DHCP discover, offer, request, and acknowledgement syntax appear in our Wireshark operation, we're immediately going to transition to DNS, Domain Name Services. And we want to make certain that the device tries to resolve reachability to all of the URL information needed to communicate to the plug and play portal. So one step at a time. Once again, we're still getting the flash disk quota exceeded message. But it's not going to cause us any problems at this juncture. We just did a DHCP discover offer, request, and acknowledgement. As a result of that, the next task we're going to do is do a DNS lookup. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on. The console of the ISR should report the fact that it knows about sd-geeks.local and the DNS server of 183.1.1.1. And what we're going to see now is, is the system is actually going to be doing a lookup. And we can see the lookup information is to identify devicehelper.cisco.com. And it can, we can see here that it's resolving that address. And all of these requests are going out towards our DNS server located at 183.1.1.1. So the next thing I want to do is I want to determine whether or not we are going to form a TLS tunnel 
to that address of 52203231173. And what's happening here is, is we're actually communicating to the Cisco Plug and Play portal via port 443 to do a PNP operation. The device is then going to notify our ISR of the identity of our internal V bond, and the system will then try to form a DTLS connection with that resource. So let's watch and see what happens. So we've seen DHCP, we've seen the DNS query, we've seen the resolving of the device helper.cisco.com URL. Now what we want to do is we want to see whether or not the system is going to learn the information necessary to communicate to our V bonds. Remember, our V bonds are located at the internal addresses uh, of 201 and 202 uh, in the fourth octet of the 10.10.1 network. So let's see what happens with a DTLS tunnel. Now we can see that we're sending a DTLS tunnel towards 201. So that's going to be V bond 1. We should see some information from V bond 2. Once we've learned that information, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to send communication to 10.10.11, which is going to be one of our three vSmarts. Once we resolve reachability to the vSmarts and we pull our configuration from the template that we created in the previous video, what will end up happening is we will then start sending information towards the vSmarts, which are going to be located at... 101, 102, and 103, respectively. We can see those values right here. So we are forming, again, DTLS tunnels. And we can see that 103 is right here. 101. And we can see all of this exchange. I'm going to go ahead and stop this right now because we've gone through and done our implementation. And let's take a look at it from a 30,000 foot look. So now, again, we had a DHCP operation. The DHCP operation was where we were issued an IP address and we were communicating to our DHCP server that was located at 10.101.11.1. That's the IP address of Ethernet 2 on business internet. Subsequent to that, we did a DNS lookup. In fact, we should see many DNS lookups, but our initial DNS lookups were where we were looking at different fields as far as the destination queries we are ultimately going to end up looking up destination addresses we can see here device helper.cisco.com once we've learned the ip address of device helper.com we immediately initiated a transport layer security tunnel to that address which was identified earlier as 52.203.231.173. And what we're doing is we're exchanging the hello messages. We download our certificate. We negotiate a key exchange with that server. And ultimately what we're doing is we're obtaining all of the necessary information to learn and to announce our presence to the Cisco plug and play portal. From there, once we've learned our in appropriate information, we should learn the identity of our organizational V bond and we should form a DTLS tunnel, a datagram transport layer security tunnel to that resource. And we can see here it's coming from 10.101.11.2, which is the IP address that we received via DHCP. And we're sending that to the destination of 10.10.1.201. And it's an initial hello message. And what we're doing is we are going to go through the bidirectional authentication process until such time that we bring up our environment via key exchange using Cisco Sun certificates. And then all of a sudden, we're going to exchange application data between these resources. And ultimately, what we're going to do is we're going to learn the identity of our vManage, which is right here every time I try to click on it. So this is the identity of our vManage, which is going to be either of the address 10.10.1.11, 12, or 13, because remember, we're running a cluster. It's not uncommon to see these shift during these processes. And ultimately, the vManage is going to utilize this DTLS tunnel for the purposes of executing application data. And the application data is ultimately going to end up being my configuration specified via my template, which my device is then going to adopt. And then once that takes place, the device is going to, again, form peerings with my 
vSmarts. So again, those addresses are going to come later because they follow the process. First the vBond, then the vManage, and then from the vManage, we will form peering relationships with our vSmarts. And again, our vSmarts are going to be 101, 102, and 103. So we can see right here, I am now sending a hello to form my DTLS tunnel with my vSmart. Inside of this DTLS tunnel, once it has been signed, once everything has been exchanged, what we're going to find is, is that we are going to use OMP, the previous tunnels, to the vBond via DTLS and the vManage via DTLS contain NetCompYang as the communications protocol and the data model. Inside of the connections that are going towards 10.10.103.2 and 10.10.1.101, what we're going to find is this is going to actually be OMP. It's this process that's going to allow this device to come up and become operational in an environment using this process of plug and play. And we can make this more and more complex. So as an example, we need to really take a look at one of our other devices in our environment, which is going to be CE12. CE12 is going to be a little bit different because CE12 is going to be connecting using Gigabit Ethernet 000 to our MPLS transport network, and there is no DHCP configuration on that device, nor am I going to provide it. So we need to look at what operations that we could use to allow this plug and play process where we have no configuration on a device whatsoever at the time it comes up. So that's going to be one thing that we're going to look at. Additionally, we've also identified the fact that I have a problem with 1705 as my operating system. So in another video, what we're going to do is we're going to not only onboard CE12, we're also going to go ahead and we're going to address these concerns. Lack of DHCP and doing a dynamic upgrade of the iOS XE operating system from the perspective of a plug and play operation. But it doesn't end there. It's also going to be very important for us to note whether or not this device did indeed come online. So what we want to do is we're going to see here that we have three devices that are reachable in our environment. If I put my mouse on here, we've got the three good devices, which is what we expected to see in the previous video. And we have two fully operational tunnels with no problems. And if I check my device, so if I log into my device right now, and I'm going to log in using the admin admin password, we can see here that it is indeed configured the way that I want it to be configured for this resource to do its job. That means that we've demonstrated not just a plug and play operation from the perspective of how easy it is. What I've tried to do is I've tried to go behind the scenes using Wireshark to demonstrate exactly what happens underwater during that process. In the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to onboard CE12. CE12 is going to have some problems. I mentioned them earlier. But what we'll do is we'll just simply plow through all of those and demonstrate the fact that we can do a lot of things using vManage. And I look forward to discussing that in the next video.